Real quick, just want to let everyone know I will be going live on Twitch on my uh, Twitch channel, which is Jackson Kruger Sports. You can find a link in the description. We'll be going live tonight, 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so definitely, you know, feel free to hop in, uh, check out my channel. It's always a lot of fun. I take uh, suggestions from the chat usually on which uh, film to watch, and so usually a lot of fun. Uh, if that's what you guys want, if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and watch. And if not, well, then I hope you enjoy this video on Brian Hoyer. Well, Cam Newton just tested positive for COVID, which is obviously you know uh, a bad thing on its own right. Hopefully, he could uh, get back to being healthy and all of that stuff. Uh, but shifting over to just the football side of things, it appears as though the way it might end up going for right now would be the game would be played on Tuesday, and it would just be that uh, the New England Patriots don't have Cam Newton for this game, assuming there's not a bunch of other uh, positive cases. So I wanted to talk about what would happen if the game is still playing on Tuesday, but just the difference is that instead of Cam Newton, it's now Brian Hoyer. How would New England adjust? And yeah, they said Brian Hoyer would be the guy who would start. Uh, and so I want to talk about Brian Hoyer a little bit. And listen, Hoyer isn't a terrible quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and say he's a tremendous quarterback either, but he's not a mess. He really isn't. Uh, there are things he does well. Uh, for one thing, he really excels at low degree of difficulty plays. I know most quarterbacks do, but, you know, uh, it's good to know that with your backup, he can at least get the low degree of difficulty plays down. Like on this one, uh, it's a cover two man. Uh, he has a player running over the middle. Uh, it's, it's not a difficult route. It is going to get open. It's actually pretty well ran. Uh, so this is a, you know, good situation on paper uh, for the Colts. The one thing worth noting is this is third down right here. So, uh, it's third down and 10. You're at the 11. So, you, you, you know, a lot of guys would go for the end zone. Hoyer's not. He's going to go for the easy play. Uh, but watch how, you know, his player gets open and he's able to make just an easy throw, uh, for the touchdown. That's not really him doing it. You know, that was, again, it was an easy play, but that's kind of what most plays are as a quarterback is just those low degree of difficulty plays. And you can't win if your backup quarterback can't make those throws, and Hoyer can make those throws. So, you know, he's doing the bare minimum right there. He also will make some veteran plays, like on this one. Uh, it's going to be man coverage, and for the Colts, they have a, a little pick play going right here where they have their uh, tight end who's lined up on the top of the screen. He's going to run out, and he's going to try and get in the way of a Pittsburgh player. And then you have your halfback run towards the sideline, and, you know, it's just a pick play. It's a relatively simple idea. Uh, but what's going to happen is that right when this play starts, you're going to notice that Hoyer has immediate pressure right in front of him to the player where he wants to throw the ball to, to his halfback. A Pittsburgh player ended up getting completely untouched and is right near Hoyer right here. So this is a bad situation for Hoyer, you know? I mean, if he just throws it straight up, it could get batted, it could get intercepted, uh, it could be a completion, but it's a risky play. So instead what Hoyer is going to do is watch his throwing motion and watch how awkward it is. He shifts to the side, throws off one foot, but you know what? That's what he had to do to guarantee that it wasn't going to be batted uh, and he could get a clear angle to make that throw. So that's a good play by Hoyer. And also, I should have mentioned, all of these plays I'm showing are from last year. Uh, so, you know, there's a big Rolodex of plays I could have gone with, with Hoyer, but I'm just going with plays from last year. One other thing I do like is that uh, a lot of you might remember his uh, pick six to... Uh, to Fitzpatrick uh, in the game against Pittsburgh, which, okay, obviously you don't love that. Uh, but what I liked about it was that later in the game, uh, this would happen. It's a pretty similar idea. There's still a single safety deep. It's man coverage, and he has a player running over the middle that is going to kind of get into the coverage that Fitzpatrick is covering right here. Now, once this play starts, you notice that it's actually pretty open. The safety is, you know, much further towards the bottom of the screen, which means, you know, this is a, a good situation uh, for Indianapolis, but even with that, uh, what I what I like about this is that you know Hoyer is still looking in that direction. He hasn't become gun shy, and I think that's important in a backup quarterback. Is you know if you're a backup quarterback, the chances are you're not as good as a starting quarterback, and if that's the case, you're probably going to make some mistakes. Uh, but I like a backup quarterback who, after making a mistake, will still go right back to that well if he needs to. Uh, he's able to make this throw. It's a good throw, and it's a touchdown. Uh, and I think a lot of, especially young backup quarterbacks, they would become gun-shy and wouldn't make those throws. And I like that his age, uh, you know, he is a veteran out there. He will still make mistakes, but he does make a lot of good plays as well. Now, of course, he's a backup for a reason, right? I mean, he absolutely is. Uh, and it's worth mentioning that he will make some mistakes. What is his biggest mistake? His biggest mistake is accuracy. I mean, I'm not going to say that he's inaccurate, 
Uh, but really what I'll say is that he makes a lot of inaccurate throws, and you're going to say that's the exact same thing, and I'm going to say no, it isn't. And the reason why is because a high percentage of his throws I would consider accurate throws. But when he is inaccurate, he tends to be very inaccurate to the point of where the ball is uncatchable. Uh, so, you know, he's not making things difficult on his receivers too much, but when he is, he's making it nearly impossible on them. Like this one, uh, it, you know, this one isn't a terrible throw, uh, but this is definitely going to be a bad one where it's man coverage has uh, Eric Ebron running over the middle. And as you see, once this play starts, you're going to notice that Ebron is open. And, you know, this is a good situation for Hoyer. He has to get it up a little bit because there are Miami players over the middle of the field. Uh, but as you see, this throw is just going to be too high. Ebron was able to get a hand on it, but not able to catch it. And, you know, Ebron was open. So uh, that's a disappointing play. And that's not an incredibly difficult play. It's not, not a gimme, but not an incredibly difficult play. Uh, and so that's kind of what you're dealing with with Hoyer is he is going to just make some errors sometimes. Like, watch, this next one's another one where this is going to be an end zone situation. He has a receiver who's going to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup up in the corner of the end zone. And, you know, I've talked about this a lot. These are the situations you like as a, as an offense because it's low risk, high reward. The chances are, you know, if you overthrow it, it's just going to be incomplete. Uh, and if you get it perfect, then it's going to be a touchdown. So as long as you don't underthrow it, it's almost always good. Uh, but as you see from Hoyer on this play, uh, he's going to make this throw. And this throw, again, it's just wildly inaccurate. And there's not really much you can do as a receiver in that situation. And you could argue maybe there was a little bit of contact that made it look worse. And I think that's probably true, but it still wasn't an accurate pass. Uh, and so, you know, those kind of inaccuracies, they create real problems. Uh, and that's why Brian Hoyer isn't a starting quarterback. Uh, and even worse, sometimes it won't just lead to incomplete passes. Sometimes it can lead to turnovers. And this next one is a huge example of that. This is once again, it's man coverage. There's a single safety deep. Uh, so you're going to have a you know, a, a tight end who's running about closer to the top of the screen. That's the route Hoyer wants to hit, right? Because obviously sort of outside the numbers, that tends to be open in cover one plays, especially cover one man plays, as long as the player you're throwing to can win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. That's the only exception. And Ebron is going to get slowed down a little bit, but that was before Hoyer threw it. And Hoyer's throw, again, it's just wildly inaccurate, which leads to an interception. Uh, and those are the kind of things that you just don't want to see happen. Uh, you know, and, and for New England, a lot of what they do is they try to not turn the ball over. They try to methodically move down the field. They try to, you know, pick up points when they're there, pick up yards when they're there. Don't do anything stupid and don't turn the ball over. And Hoyer won't do too many things stupid, but he will just make bad throws that still result in turnovers. So there obviously is that downside, you know, um, I'm going to make a comparison to Patrick Mahomes, but in the opposite sense, where when you're playing defense against Patrick Mahomes, you just accept that sometimes he's just going to make a perfect throw, he's going to get a touchdown, and you just have to live with that, and you just have to move on. When you're playing offense, or you're an offensive coordinator, and Hoyer is your quarterback, you have to just accept the fact that sometimes he's going to miss a throw. Sometimes he'll throw it to the wrong team. Sometimes one will just go away, and you have to kind of just accept that and continue to play your game. Uh, and you know what? If they get a little lucky and Hoyer is able to have a solid day, uh, they do stand a chance. Not a great chance. I mean, it was a kind of a long shot. You know, Kansas City was already favored before this uh, Newton going down, and Newton has been great for uh, for the Patriots. So we'll we'll see. Uh, and of course, for all I know, this is, video will be completely worthless, and they're going to cancel the game and postpone it to a future week, uh, and none of this will matter. But um, you know. I just figured it'd be a fun thought experiment because as of right now, it seems like this could be the case. Uh, and so I figured, why not make a video about it? I've, I've actually weirdly studied Brian Hoyer's career like really closely. Like there's probably only like a handful of guys who have studied his career more closely than me. Not really sure why that happened. Uh, but yeah, I know a lot about Hoyer. So I figured to make a video on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.